Welcome to Unit 3 in this Intralingual Respeaking module within the ILSA course. My name is Pablo Romero Fresco. I work at the University of Vigo in Spain uh, and I lead the research group GALMA on media accessibility. This Unit 3 will focus on initial intralingual respeaking, issues to do with rhythm and speed and, and uh, different techniques that are used for respeaking. Now, as we know, split attention is an important element in respeaking. This has been covered in uh, a 2019 article by Franz Bojacker and Aline Vermeil. Uh, but we can focus on, on a few kind of tasks that are necessary, required for respeaking. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, listening, respeaking, and listening. Those are common and shared with interlingual uh, or with simultaneous interpreting rather. We listen to the original, listen to the source text, we speak or re-speak the target text and we monitor what we say. But in re-speaking, watching and writing are also very very important. We're, we're supposed to be looking at the screen to check the subtitles that we're producing and if there are errors we may have to correct them, type in or writing. So those two tasks are in a way um, a bit more complex than what's included in simultaneous interpreting. Even though here, of course, unlike in simultaneous interpreting, we're not dealing with uh, language transfer. If we take an example like this one, where there's an audio or a video, uh, where the speaker says, in 1998, the financial recession brought about the loss of hundreds of jobs. If this has to be respoken, it would take about two seconds, maybe one to two seconds, for the re-speaker to react and say, in 1998, comma. Then, let's just say that, for the sake of argument, between seconds three and four, there's a misrecognition of 1998, as it's recognized as 1998. The re-speaker will then have to choose whether to correct this error or not, and if it does correct the error, then it'll take a bit uh, a bit long as well, a couple of seconds to be able to get in there and correct it by, say, second five. The issue here is that we're dealing with three moments in time. We're, we're correcting what's been said in the past as we keep listening to the present in order to re-speak it in the future. Um, so when we are correcting and re-speaking, we're dealing with simultaneous but non fully overlapping inputs. Uh, we are watching and correcting the past, which is what's on screen, as we make an effort to listen to the present, that is what the speaker keeps saying, which then we have to re-speak it in the future. <clears throat> so unlike interpreters who can speed up their delivery to catch up with the original, uh, we can't do that because this can affect recognition accuracy. So this is I'd say correction in re-speaking is probably the single most challenging task, the most difficult one, for sure. Now, um, in this unit, I'll be covering rhythm in re-speaking, issues to do with decalage, re-speaking units, the salami technique, and speed. Decalage is common in simultaneous interpreting, is the gap between the audio and the moment in which, or between the speaker and the moment in which the interpreter starts speaking. In re-speaking, this is not normally a good idea uh, because re-speakers uh, often have to wait for the original speaker to maybe utter an idea unit or a dependent idea unit, like part of a sentence. But you wouldn't want to wait much longer because this will then uh, increase the latency of the subtitles with regard to the images, which we know is, a, is an important issue. In terms of the length and nature of the units that we have to re-speak, uh, normally we talk about units of meaning. Uh, whenever possible, they should be, these, these units of meaning, should be long enough on the one hand to provide the speech recognition engine with enough context to enable accurate recognition, that is, phrases are always preferred over single words, but these units shouldn't be too long because otherwise they will not allow comfortable reading for the viewers. So we're looking at maybe one line, five to seven words, uh, that would be an ideal re-speaking unit. It could also be shorter than one line or a bit longer, but not much longer. 
closer to say two lines because then the subtitle may be too long to appear on the screen and the viewers will miss information so that's not a good idea so examples of respeaking units uh, Britain comma that would be a unit despite the ruling of the Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg comma that would be another unit which will fit in the two lines of title and the third one will be just as long as it gets has decided to maintain its position on the treatment of prison inmates because that will be a unit with, which is close to f two full lines but not longer than those two lines if this, the last unit is deemed to be too long then it could be split into two as as is shown in the second example has decided to maintain its position and then on the treatment of prison inmates now the reason why we're using units and pausing between them is because certain types of speech recognition software such as Dragon they will not display the words on the screen unless the speaker has paused or the re-speaker has paused so when we say Britain comma we make a pause of around one second then the software will show the word on the screen if we talk and talk and talk and we don't pause then no words are displayed on the screen so the length of our units and the pause in between them is very very important the Minister of Interior does not intend to propose that would be one unit we pause for one second those words are on the screen then any change to the rules governing treatment of prison inmates full stop and then the words are displayed on the screen and uh, again in different colors we can see the re-speaking units chosen for the three I mean for, for the for the second sentence something else that's quite common apart from the uh, the use of re-speaking units and the importance of pausing in between units when re-speaking with a software like Dragon another important element is to apply what's known as the salami technique uh, and this is the audio here for example that we have to re-speak is inside this aircraft are likely to be the clues to its fate and so everything had to be recovered from the 200 tone plane itself to the bits that fell off including part of the undercarriage when we are subtitling this for normal films serious news pre-recorded subtitling we would normally split it in at least two sentences inside this aircraft are likely to be the clues the clues to its fate full stop and then we start a new sentence this is for non re speaking just normal pre-recorded subtitling we would probably eliminate so um, and we start off the second sentence with everything had to be recovered from the 200 tone plane itself to the bits that fell off including part of the undercarriage now if we are re-speaking this what we've seen is that we normally create many more sentences one would be inside the aircraft or inside this aircraft are likely to be the clues to its fate everything had to be recovered would be a second sentence and there will be a third sentence which is not really grammatical because it starts off without a verb from the 200 ton plane itself to the bits that fell off and the last sentence would be including part of the undercarriage like I said this is not grammatical syntax but it's normally used in re-speaking like that because it helps the re-speakers by chopping the, the original um, and it sometimes helps the viewers as well by having sentences contained within the two lines of the subtitles now in terms of speed what we've seen with research that I conducted in um, 2012, 13, 14 is that normally the re-speakers which would here be the purple line or well, anyway the lower line um, are re-speaking at lower speed than the speakers so we have a difference of around 20 words per minute uh, in which case the re-spoken or the re-speaker is speaking at 20 words per minute less than the speaker and then when the speaker goes up to 240 the difference becomes bigger now the question here is if the re-speaker is able to sometimes re-speak at around 180 words per minute why is it that when in sports program programs the speaker uh, speaks at 120 words per minute the re-speaker is not able to catch up with them why is it not able to catch up with them why is there always a gap between them 
Now, as you can see, respoken subtitles are normally edited around 20 words per minute in terms of reduction, if you like. Um, there's a 40 word per minute difference when re-speaking very fast speakers and when re-speaking normal or slow speakers then the difference is in 20 words per minute. The question here is why are re-speakers, as we said before, not re-speaking those slow speakers verbatim, right? And there's still that gap. Well, the difference lies in the punctuation marks. If we are to show the graph that we just showed earlier, but including punctuation marks, then we can see how the lines actually collapse, which means that for programs like those sport programs that are spoken at 140 words per minute, um, there is this difference that 20 words per minute have been edited out of the audio. But this is simply because the re-speakers are actually saying 140 words per minute, but 20 of those words are full stops and commas. This means that verbatim or fully verbatim re-speaking becomes quite difficult because one would have to speak or to say more words than the speaker. If the speaker is speaking at 140 words per minute, in order to re-speak them verbatim, we would need to be re-speaking at 160 words per minute and 20 of those words would be punctuation marks. Now that means that in order to be verbatim, we have to say more words than the speakers. We have to be faster than them. And when we normally shadow somebody, we, we follow the same pace. We don't, we don't shadow somebody by, by going faster, which is what would be required here. So I guess the conclusion of this all is that verbatim or fully verbatim re-spoken subtitles are not easy to obtain or to produce. Now, as a summary then, rhythm and re-speaking, well, whenever possible, re-speakers should wait for the original speaker to have uttered an idea unit. They should dictate re-speaking units that lend themselves to accurate recognition by the speech recognition software, that is, phrases as opposed to single words. Um, and those units should lend themselves to comfortable reading for the viewers, that is, it's better to re-speak maybe one line um, than in two or three lines. Um, and finally, it's important to produce sentences that are not longer than two or three lines, which is what we've just, what we just said. Uh, I guess this is mostly it for this unit. Um, there are, as usual, plenty of resources that you can check. Um, some of them are related to re-speaking with Dragon, say split attention or rhythm and re-speaking, uh, word lists, macros. There is an example of uh, re-speaking by Chris Ailes, a professional voice writer, a real-time voice writer in the US. And there are some examples of initial re-speaking by students, plus the analysis and feedback that they, that they received. That's it for this Unit 3. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, you're welcome to check out the rest of the material for this unit and for the rest of the units in this Intralingual Re-Speaking module. Thank you.